Hello guys and welcome to Joe's Crane and on this section of our Bible study we are going to be looking on the mark of the beast which is commonly known as 666 and if you can refer on our previous topic we had looked on the mark of God or the seal of God and we found from the Bible that the seal of God is the Sabbath of the Lord. So for today we are going to be looking on the beast of Revelation chapter 13 and again we identify its mark. First, we are going to identify the features which are given for the beast, all right? And these ones, we are going to get them from the Bible using the New King James Version for our study. And the first feature is that the beast rises from the sea. In Revelation chapter 13 verse 1, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on its horns ten crowns, and its heads a blasphemous name. So that is the first feature, it erases from the sea. The next feature is that the beast receives power from the dragon. Revelation chapter 13 verse 2, Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of beer, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. Also, in Daniel chapter 8, verse 24, it states that the beast rules not by his own power. The next feature is that the beast receives worship worldwide. Revelation chapter 13 verse 4 So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast and they worshipped the beast saying Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? That is feature number 3 Receiving worship worldwide The continuation of feature number 3 Another part in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8 And all who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. So we see that the whole earth will worship the beast, but it is only for those who have not been written in the book of life who will worship the beast. The next feature, number four, the beast is blasphemous. Revelation chapter 13 verse 1, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on its horns ten crowns, and its heads a blasphemous name. So the name of the beast is blasphemous. Again, Revelation chapter 13 verse 5, And he was given mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. Again, Daniel chapter 8 verse 11, he even exhorted himself as I, as the prince of host. Number four, touches on blasphemies. All right. The next feature, number five, the beast rules for 42 months. Revelation chapter 13 verse five, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. And for us to understand these 42 months, we will have to refer on Numbers chapter 14 verse 34 and Ezekiel chapter 4 verse 6 whereby we will learn that a prophetic day is equivalent to one literal year. The next feature is that the beast persecutes God's people. Revelation chapter 13 verse 7 and it was granted to him to make war with the saints and overcome them and authority was given to him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. Again, in Daniel chapter 8, verse 24, the beast overcomes the holy people. The next feature is that the beast is destroyed not by man, but God. In Daniel chapter 8, verse 25, through his cunning, he shall cause deceit to prosper under his hand, and he shall magnify himself. In his heart, he shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without human hand. So, he will be destroyed not by man, 
but it will be by God. Again on the continuation of destruction in Daniel chapter 2 verse 34 to 35 the Bible says there's a stone which was cut out without hands, all right, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay, broke them in pieces, verse 35, became like chaff, and then it was blown off by wind. And the rock which struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. So if you are a student of Bible, you will understand the rock here as Jesus Christ because it is mentioned in many verses even the rock that the builders are rejected becoming the cornerstone again if you talk of Daniel chapter 2 the Bible describes an image which was dreamt by King Nebuchadnezzar of the ancient Babylon and the image was having an head of gold chest of silver the belly of bronze, thighs of iron, and the legs and the feet of uh, clay mixed with the iron. So here, if we talk of the feet of iron and clay, we are talking of the beast that we are discussing here, which is mentioned in Revelation. But in Daniel, we have in an image, so we have some other beasts which are above the beast that we are talking of above the feet of iron and clay because we have the thighs we have the belly and then we have the uh the chest and the head so we are now concerned with the part of the feet which is iron and clay and that's the beast that we are talking of so the next feature is that the number of the beast's name is 666 and that is commonly known by many Christians. So Revelation chapter 13 verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. For it's a number of man. His number is 666. So it is a number which has to be calculated by the one with understanding. And for you to have understanding, you must have read Bible in details and also have the understanding of the uh, of the history again because Bible has a lot of history in it okay so the next part now we are going to look on what is the beast because now we have identified the features which can enable us to understand the beast and so to understand the beast uh, we are now going to look on some verses here like in Daniel chapter 7 verse 23 thus is said to me the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom on the earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth, tremble it and break it into pieces. So here we see the fourth beast that we are talking of in Revelation chapter 13 being the fourth kingdom. And so if it is the fourth kingdom, it means that there were other kingdoms before it, the first, the second, and the third. And then we come to this fourth kingdom which is the fourth beast all right so we understand the beast is a kingdom and if it is the fourth beast it is the fourth kingdom all right so for the other kingdoms which are existing before this fourth beast we have in Daniel chapter 2 verse 38 it was Babylon the first kingdom and in history we know that it was uh, in rule uh, from 605 to 539 BC the second kingdom was the Media and Persia in Daniel chapter 8 verse 20 which ruled after Babylon to 331 BC. The third kingdom was the kingdom of Greece that is in Daniel chapter 8 verse 21 and it ruled from 331 to 168 BC. All right. So if we have seen the three kingdoms now we are getting to the fourth kingdom and in Daniel chapter 8 verse 23 the fourth kingdom here it is the kingdom which is connected with the beast of the mark. All right. The beast whose name's number is 666 and the beast which rises from the sea. So it is the beast that we are discussing in this presentation. The beast of Revelation chapter 13. Okay. So in the history we understand of the kingdom which came after Greece. So the fourth kingdom which gained power after Greece was the Pengen 
Roman Empire, all right, which is now in the present day European world. And it raised to power uh, in the year 168 BC after Greece. It came uh, as a united uh, Pank in Roman Empire to 476 AD and then again to present, all right. It is the fourth kingdom and the last kingdom, which you can refer on Daniel chapter 2 of the image. The image is showing the four kingdoms. So if we have seen the first three kingdoms, and now we are in the fourth kingdom. So from 168 BC to present, we are having the last earthly kingdom. Although the kingdom has faces, because in, one, in 162 BC to 476 uh, AD, the kingdom, this uh, pagan Roman Empire was united. And then from 476 AD, it began to uh, to scramble, all right, to divide itself, as we read in Daniel, because Daniel describes about the kingdom member we find at the feet, it's iron and clay which are mixed, and you know that iron and clay can never uh, mix together. So it's a kingdom which is standing, but it has some weaknesses and strength in it, in it as well. So it's the kingdom that we have in at present from 168 BC, but in a different phase, all right? So, uh, having seen the first kingdom, the second and the third, and now we have identified the fourth, which is the uh, Pengen Roman Empire. We can now be able to understand the waters, all right? Because the Bible says that the beast rises from the sea, but the sea, you see, literally, you can see the sea as the normal sea that you see, all right? The ocean, uh, large water body, but biblically, maybe the sea as a meaning. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, it says that, and he said to me, the waters which you saw, where the allot sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, all right? So, the sea is a highly populated region with peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, all right? Roman Empire, because we have known that the Pengen Roman Empire was the fourth kingdom in the history, we are now going to be looking at whether this uh, Roman Empire is meeting the features that we have identified from the Bible, right? So we know the Pengen Roman Empire rests from a highly populated region, all right? The areas of Rome, the areas of Europe that uh, Greece was ruling and it was an area of high population and it arose from the same same area so and again it was the center of civilization in those times so it was an area of high population uh, the area where this uh, Pengen Roman Empire rose from so it meets the first uh, feature that it is rising from the sea and the second one if it receives power from the dragon in Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 uh, we are going to understand what is a dragon so the great dragon was cast out that serpent of hold called the devil and Satan so the great dragon the serpent of hold it is the devil Satan who deceived Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden the serpent of hold and that was the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world, he was cast to earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So we know the dragon is the devil here, all right? Again, in Revelation chapter 13, verse 2, and the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and authority, all right? So it is the devil giving power to this beast, and we've identified the beast as a kingdom, and now we have seen the fourth kingdom as the pagan Roman Hebaya, right? Uh, again, uh, we can see that the dragon uh, in power in yeah, Revelation chapter 12, verse 4 to 5, and the dragon stood before the woman, all right, who was ready to give birth to devour the child as soon as it was born. And she bore a male child, all right, the woman who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron, and a child was caught up to God and to his throne. So if you are a student of the Bible, again here yeah, you understand of this male child, all right, who was uh, born to rule all nations with the rod of iron and who was caught up to God and to his throne as the, uh, the male child, Jesus Christ. And we know 
he was attacked by the pagan Roman Empire in times of his birth. So again we see here the dragon who gave power to the beast also here is acting in times of Jesus who was born in times of pagan Roman Empire and the pagan Roman Empire trying to kill Jesus. Alright, if we can read in the next verses here like in Matthew chapter 2 verse 30, Herod sought to kill Jesus. So and Herod was actually a king of Judea in the times of pagan Roman Empire, times of Caesar Augustus. So here we see the devil, as we have seen uh, here in Revelation, dragon attacking the child who is to be born by the woman. So here, uh, the direct translation is here, where the Herod is seeking to kill the son Jesus. All right. Again, uh, Herod issues a decree to kill all the male children who are under two years in terms of Jesus' birth after he realized that uh, the wise men had deceived him. So, he made sure that Jesus Christ was killed. But what had happened, the angel of the Lord had came to Joseph and had spoken to him saying that, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt. So even if Herod was trying to kill or else to execute all the male children uh, who were under two years, Jesus was not to be among them, all right? Because we saw again here, the male child was caught up to God. So the dragon tried to destroy him, but he was to succeed, all right? Now, uh, the next features here are religious, all right? So we are going to uh, work from the next feature, number three, whereby the beast is ruling for 42 months. It receives worship worldwide, that is religious, it's blasphemous, it persecutes God's people, uh, it is destroyed not by human heart, but by God's, and the number of its name, which is blasphemous, adds up to 666. So we are going to try and see the history of pagan Roman Empire and see whether uh, in that uh, empire to present, whether there is any kind of conversion into a religious power, all right? Because if it has some conversion to religious organization, then it will be able to accommodate all these features from number three to feature number eight, all right? So in the history of the Pagan Roman Empire in 312 AD, there were two emperors, that is Emperor Constantine the Great, who defeated Maxentius, who was his rival over Rome, fighting in Milphia branch, which is the river Tiber, and there he said that he was inspired, therefore fighting a holy war, and you know, he defeated Maxentius uh, in that uh, Milphian branch, and again, since he was fighting using the sign of cross, uh, claiming to have received a vision from Jesus, definitely he was winning even over the Christians. And therefore, there were no more oppositions in the Roman Empire over the sun god of Emperor Constantine, the sun god of the pagan Roman Empire, who was worshipped on Sunday, and therefore uh, there was no actual opposition between these two, the sun god and Jesus' Christianity. So he won the Christians as well by claiming that he was fighting a holy war, having received the inspiration from uh, Jesus Christ that he should use a sign of cross to defeat Maxentius. All right. So after winning, Christianity was declared an official religion in the Roman Empire because Constantine claimed that he had received a vision from Jesus that is going to conquer by the sign of cross. So he took Christianity for the official religion. Later, during the times of Emperor Justinian in 538 AD, Emperor Justinian supported the Christian church fully by even persecuting anyone who was in its opposition. All right. So this, you can see that the empire was actually working out together with the Christian church, the Roman Catholic Church at that time, 
and therefore if we have no uh, emperors at present and these uh, two were united during these times of Emperor Constantine and again a support in times of Emperor Justinian so the powers of emperors were now transferred to the church and that was the Roman uh, the Roman church aided by the popes running from the Vatican City as a result of the uh, the pagan Roman Empire, all right, because they were united and therefore the powers were passed over to the papacy, all right. So again, we have some quotes from the history here by Martin Luther, who is uh, actually a well-known reformer, and he said, we hear of conviction that the papacy is the seat of true and real Antichrist. That was from Martin Luther. Again, from Charles Pension, a well-known preacher and a theologian, encouraged Christians to pray of the Antichrist, who is in no doubt the popery in the Roman and England church. Okay. Again, from John Calvin, a well-known reformer, supported the Luther's view, saying, some persons think us too severe and censorious when we call the Roman pontiff Antichrist. He proved it by the Second Thessalonians chapter 2, which talks of the beast, talking of the man of lawlessness, who will have to be refilled before the end of the world. Okay? So, now, having looked on that transition, that uh, the pagan Roman Empire united with the church, and there's possibility that the powers of the emperors were transferred to the papacy. Now let's continue and look at our features. Feature number three, whereby the beast rules for 42 months, right? And in Revelation chapter 13 verse 3, I saw one of his head as if it had been mortally hooded, and his deadly hood was healed, and all the world marveled and followed the beast. So this one means that the head, or else the leader of this kingdom, was killed but later the kingdom uh, recovered so it means that it recovered by having another head succeeding uh, the one who had uh, had been killed so again in the history we know of the papacy it gained full power in the year 538 AD this was during the time of Emperor Justinian to the year 1798 AD, when Napoleon, the French, through General Bathia, arrested Pope Pius VI, who is the head, all right, and later died in prison. So the beast here received a deadly hood. So Revelation chapter 13, verse 3, matches well with this scenario, all right. Again, in numbers, we had seen that. Uh, 1434 and in Ezekiel 46 a prophetic day is uh, one literal year so the 42 prophetic months which are mentioned uh, uh, by which the beast is ruling we see that 42 prophetic months if we have a day for a year then 42 prophetic months and having a prophetic month as 30 days we have 42 times 30 which gives us 1260 confirmed between 538 AD to 1798 AD, okay? So for the 42 months, it's confirmed in purpose from 538 to 1798 AD. The next feature is that the beast receives worship worldwide. Revelation chapter 13 verse 4, So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him okay so again if we reflect now to the papacy which we know now it took power from the roman empire in vatican which is the great city in the middle of rome and it is the greatest city of the roman catholic church we have over five million christians who converge uh, for worship every year in saint peter's square right and this one is referred from Christine abroad, St. Peter's, Basilica in the Vatican City, okay? So for the worship, yes, the beast receives worship because we have the Vatican City, the greatest city 
of the Roman Catholic Church in the middle of Rome when the people converge for worship. The next feature is that the beast is blasphemous. Okay, for the term blasphemous, or else the term blaspheme, let's uh, see whether the Bible will interpret, or else whether the Bible will try to give us the meaning of this term. Okay, so in John chapter 10 verse 33, Jews are defining the term for us here. Because the Jews answered him, they answered Jesus saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blaspheme. And because you, be man, make yourself God. So blasphemy is equated to making yourself God while you are man. Okay. The next on blasphemies is in Mark chapter 2 verse 7, where the Jews uh, were murmuring, saying, What does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? So if a man is trying to claim to forgive sins like God, that is blasphemy. Okay? So, for the blasphemies, claim it to be equal with God and also claim it to forgive sins. Can we look on purpose and try to understand whether purpose is blasphemous in any of the ways? Either claim it to be equal to God and also claim it to forgive sins. And now in purpose, the head's title or the name of the head, we have the term representative of the Son of God, or else the Vicar of Christ, okay, or another title as Holy Father, that is translated in Kamba language as a sum of them. So we have that one trying to quit itself to God, and that is blasphemous. Again, we have in Matthew chapter 23 verse 9, Jesus said that do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. So we see here, if you are calling uh, somebody father on earth, and you have your father in heaven, that is blasphemy. To whom claims to be father, or else, to whom claims to be equal with God, to whom claims to be holy as God, okay, that is blasphemy. That confirms John chapter 10, verse 33, whereby Jesus uh, was to be stoned by Jews for claiming to be equal with God. Okay, so again in Catholic Catechism, the Pope claims to forgive sins, and that is in Mark chapter 2, verse 7, where Jesus was considered to be speaking blasphemies if he claims to be forgiving sins. So if Pope is claiming to forgive sins, as it is read from the Catholic Catechism, that again confirms that the papacy is blasphemous. The next feature is that the beast persecutes God's people. In Acts chapter 7, verse 59, and they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. So here yes, Stephen who we know was a disciple of Jesus Christ, was stoned by the Romans. Again in Acts chapter 22 verse 4, Hi, who, Saul, who later converted to Paul, persecuted this way to death, binding and delivering into prison both men and women. So here Paul confirms that he used to persecute God's people. And we know Paul was working uh, for the Roman Empire as Saul before he was converted to Paul. Again in Acts chapter 22 verse 20, Paul says, And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by consenting to his death and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. So we see here Paul working for the Romans he was consenting the death of Stephen, who was being stoned for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Later, we find that Peter, who was one of the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ, was later crucified in Rome by Emperor Nero, and that was uh, between 64 to 68 AD, and that one is derived from Christian tradition. So for the aspect of 
persecution to God's people, the Roman Empire actually confirms all that. The next one is that the beast is still in power until Christ. Okay? That is, it is destroyed not by human hand, but by God himself. And we know that Christ is coming and is the one to destroy the earthly kingdoms. And since we are living in the last kingdom, Jesus is the one to destroy this last kingdom of the world. And so, uh, the Roman Empire, by Emperor Constantine, as it was married to Christianity in Roman Catholic Church, State Union, papacy, head of Roman Catholic Church, is still in great power in every corner of the world. And that is evident because we have the Roman Catholic Church all over in the world. And therefore, in Daniel chapter 8, verse 25, but it shall be broken without human hand. So this kingdom, although it is there still in power, it will be broken without human hand. Okay? Daniel chapter 2, verse 34 to 35, a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay, broke them in pieces. So the kingdom from the pagan Roman Empire is still there, through the papacy, okay, and it is still in power, but it is to be destroyed not by man, not by another kingdom to succeed it, but by the kingdom of God in the second coming of Jesus Christ. The next feature is that the number of its name adds up to 666, okay? So one of the purpose title is Ficarius Philidae in Latin, which translates to English as representative of the Son of God. And this title was given by Emperor Constantine, who first united the church and the empire. Okay? So, Vicarius Philidae, a Latin name given by Emperor Constantine to the papacy uh, as a meaning that is the representative of Son of God. And we know that that title is blasphemous because it tries to mean that this uh, end is actually the representative of Jesus Christ, okay? So, in Latin alphabets, each alphabet and its Roman number value equivalence, and therefore a name could be given numerically by adding up the letters number equivalences. So, if we try to see whether the title Ficarius Philidae matches the 666 we are going to look on its uh, roman number value equivalences as we can see here v representing 5 high 1 c 100 a 0 r 0 high 1 u 5 l 0 and that totals to 112 phi that is f 0 i 1 l 50 I1 and I1 that totals to 53. Again, the day D500, E0, and I1, 501. And all this totals to 666. So the name of the beast adds up to 666. That is confirmed by Ficarius Philide, which is the representative of the Son of God, which is blasphemous as well. So now having identified the beast, we've seen it is the pagan Roman Empire, down to the papacy, down to present. Now let's try to identify the mark of the beast, because uh, the beast here, as we had looked uh, earlier in our previous topic in the mark of God, we realized that God as the master of obedience as a mark to his servants. So the beast here, which is the kingdom of earth, as a mark to its servants. Okay? So Revelation chapter 13 verse 16, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. Revelation chapter 13 verse 17 and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. 
So here, the beast is having a mark which is going to be applied on the right hand or on their foreheads. This is the right hand and the foreheads of its servants or the people who are deceived to be uh, the beast's servants. So, before we can understand this mark of the beast, which is applied on the right hand or on the forehead, we can refer again to the mark of God. Because if we can understand the mark of God, which is given directly from the Bible, then we can understand the mark of the beast, which will be in direct opposition of the mark of God. So in Romans chapter 4, verse 11, and he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness of faith. So here we read that sign and seal are one and the same thing. Okay. Again, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. So here we see the seal is the law, okay, which is to be uh, sealed among the disciples. Okay. Again, in Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12, moreover, I also gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between them and me that they may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 20, allow my Sabbath and they will be a sign between me and you. So from the law, which is to be sealed, we come to the Sabbath and we know Sabbath is one of the laws, the fourth commandment Okay, so Sabbath is in the law, and now here we see it is the Sabbath, which is the sign of God to his children. Okay, again in Exodus chapter 31 verse 17, it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days, okay, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. So here we see the Sabbath, which is sign. It is the Sabbath of the seventh day, which was uh, actually given uh, in creation. After creation, in six days, God rested on the seventh day and he blessed it. It was sanctified. So that sign that we are speaking of as the law, as the Sabbath, it is the seventh day Sabbath given in creation. Okay? So now having known that the mark of God is the Sabbath of the Lord and uh, we are aware that the mark of the beast is just the opposition of the mark of God which was actually given uh, back in creation. So Sabbath as a law, as the fourth commandment, as time aspect as well, okay? That is the seventh day of the week. So for the mark of the beast, we are going to be looking on the something that is changing the law and something that is changing the time in the God's law, that will be the mark of the beast, which is opposition to this mark of God, the Sabbath of the Lord, which is the seventh day, okay? So if we refer to the papacy, did the papacy try to change time and law? Yes, of course. In Daniel chapter 7, 25, we are taught, and shall intend to change times and law. Then said shall be given to his hand for time and time and other time. So the beast will try to change times and law. Okay? So which time and the law is changed? In the Catholic camp catechism, we read that Saturday is the seventh day sabbath as it was observed by jews church separated itself from the jews who persecuted their lord jesus as sunday veneration okay so in the pagan roman empire we saw that sun god was worshipped on sunday okay so here in the catholic camp catechism we read that they acknowledge that saturday is the seventh day Sabbath of the Lord, but the reason behind the transference from the seventh day to the Sunday is one reason given is that Jews persecuted Jesus, their Lord, and yet they did, they did want to associate themselves with whatever was done by the Jews. So that was one reason, and they transferred the Sabbath 
from Saturday to Sunday. Again, Sunday is venerated as the day when the Lord Jesus resurrected as the Lord's day. So we see again the Lord's day, which is the Sabbath of the Lord. In the Catholic, it is the day which Jesus resurrected. And that we know it is the Sunday. Okay? So here we can see that the law and time has been halted. The Sabbath, the Lord's day given in creation, here it is, the Lord's day when Jesus resurrected. And again, the Sabbath, which is to be on Saturday, it is transferred to Sunday because the Jews who persecuted Jesus honored their Sabbath on Saturday. So again, in the Catholic records of September 1st, 1923, Sunday is our mark of authority. So we are looking for the mark, and here it is read from Catholic records of September 1st, 1923, that Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath from servants is proof of the fact, the proof of mark of authority. Okay, so we have identified the mark from the publications of papacy, publications of the Roman Church. We've read what the mark is, and that is the Sunday. Okay. So, in conclusion, the mark of God refers to the Sabbath washing, and the mark of beast refers to the Sunday washing, because here yeah, the whole matter is based on worship. So, it is whom you serve, which master you serve. Okay? So, guys, thank you for watching this. Uh, please try to read Bible verses that I've given in this uh, presentation that you may understand it in details for your own and if you are convinced by the bible uh, of the seal of god and the seal of the beast you make a lifetime decision okay once you get to know the truth then you follow the truth and the truth sets you free from the mark of the beast again remember to subscribe to this channel by hitting the red subscription button at the bottom right corner and also turn on the bell notification that you may be notified if we upload uh, videos of the same on Bible study. Thank you.